So how in the world do we go from this dingy, nasty, cracked up mess to this? We'd like to first thank the seat shop for sponsoring this video and providing this OEM style leather to fix this Tahoe Suburban Silverado or whatever you have from a cracked up, dingy, dirty leather mess to brand new OEM style leather. And it's not just the covers that they provide, they also have the fold as well. So many times these seats break down along here and many times you have a lot of area missing from the foam and rebuilding that can be a pain and sometimes it's almost impossible. And they provide their new DuraFoam that will hold up much longer as well as it has the uh, integrated Velcro straps or the hook and loop straps where this new cover is actually gonna mold into, making it much easier to change out. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna get this seat cushion off or the, the lower portion of the seat cover and actually this whole foam will come off. It's one of the easiest parts to take off as well. That'll give me more room to do the rest also. So I'm just gonna flip this on its back. I did want to cover some of the tools that you'll need for this job. I like a pair of uh, bent needle nose and especially kind of a very detailed where I can get in and uh, remove clips, things like that. Uh, you will need a 13 millimeter or half inch uh, socket and ratchet. You could probably use a, a wrench if you needed to. I'd rather have a, a socket and ratchet. A number two Phillips. I like a long one. Um, some you know clip removing tools. Uh, I've got two, a small one and a big one. You can probably do with, with one. And then I like to have a little, kind of like a spatula, a little bent spatula. You could use a hook tool, something like that, just for prying and reaching in areas. And then I also like to have an upholstery pin. That's what I call that um, long stainless steel, very skinny. To uh, uh, This plays a dual purpose. Um, number one, we'll use this to remove the headrest. And then again, when we start putting things back together and we need to run a screw you know, through the, uh, through the leather uh, or through the vinyl or through the sides, then I can kind of find the hole I need to go through and it makes a very fine hole before I run the screw through there. So it's a good hole finder um, when you're running in screws. And really that's about all you need other than just some cleanup uh, as far as tools to do this job. And other than removing uh, just a few wires that are clipped onto here, we can leave a lot of that on there. We just have to remove these two 13 millimeter nuts right here. And now with those two nuts removed, you can see this pretty much kind of lays up out of the way. We can unplug these wires. You're just gonna push that button on that wire, push the button on that wire and they'll separate. And then there's this, these two pins that kind of slide in these slots down here on the bottom. And you just kind of pick it up and slide it out of that slot. And now we've discovered a few more wires that we need to disconnect. Uh, there's this larger one here. Again, we're just gonna push the button, pull that out. Then we have another one right here, this green one right here. You pry up that little tab and then it'll slide right out. And then we have this little one right here as well. Same thing, should slide right out. And now this cushion, and now let's get the other side. And then there's one over here that we need to unplug. It goes right there. So that blue wire needs to pull out first. That kind of locks it in place. And then you just push that little tab right there and it should slide right out. And then we need to unhook this main plug from this little metal, metal bracket right here, which includes this one there. Then to save these, if you'll squeeze these with a pair of needle nose pliers and push it out, that'll save that clip. You won't break it. And then on this main harness, there's a clip right here. And once you remove that panel, you can get behind it. And again, squeeze those tabs and it should pull right out. And once you're sure you've got all the wires out of the way, this should just lift right out. Make sure your plug doesn't get hung up. And there you have it. So now we just got the cushion removed and you can see all this old foam right here that's deteriorated. That's what happens to that old foam. So in addition to it, you know, breaking down and starting to, you know, wear where you get in and out. Also underneath it starts breaking down and just falling apart. 
So another reason to go ahead and replace that foam. And of course, this is the time when you want to go and clean up your, your frame and, and all that type of stuff. Maybe even shoot some paint on it if you want to and clean up your plastics. But here's the cushion we just removed. And you can see the underside, all our wires are still all intact. And we should be able to leave all those before. And we should be able to even leave all of those uh, in place to replace that seat cover. Now getting this cover off is really easy. Uh, the only pain here, it's really not a pain, is that we need to remove the electronics or the electric controls off of this before we get that off. And by the way, the controls are kind of integrated as part of this. They actually bolt onto the back of this piece of plastic and many times they're cracked up like you can see here where, uh, where the screws connect, that they're cracked up. So many times you may need to replace that but you can probably reuse it for the time being. And before you remove all those, flip this over. And there's two plugs here. There's one right here. There's one up here. This one you'll have to wait till we get it removed, but this one you can get to with one of your little tools and just kind of get up under it, pry the tab out of the way and unplug it. Finish taking those screws out. And then you'll see it kind of slides back and then you have to reach up under here and press this to pull that out. So you see the tab right here has to be pressed. So you have to get behind that to get in there. That's why it's kind of difficult when it's in the seat to actually do that. Now you move that out of the way and you see these are all the broken pieces off the back of this. And you can take your little pry tools. Usually these are pretty loose. And these you're basically just folding. They're kind of a, turned 180 degrees in with a little J hook right there. And so you just need to pry that off. So you can usually just peel it up and they'll pop off. It's getting them back on. It's a little bit of a pain. And if you have heated seats, that's what you're seeing right here. So you want to be a little careful around there. And then here, if you're wanting to save your foam, you want to hold your hook and loop down and peel up the cover. Otherwise, just kind of peel it inside and out. And that's a rarity that these aren't burned up. Usually you'll find burn spots somewhere in the heated seats, but these are in good shape. Now, if you're getting a new foam, you'll need to peel your heated part off of here and glue it on the new foam. And there you have it. So the heated portion of the seats, the panels, they just glue on to the, to the back and the front. The rest of it's not glued down at all. You can just peel that up. If a little bit of foam stays on there, no big deal. You just glue it right back down on the other one. It's just really to hold it in place till you get the cover on anyway. So you'll see here that I've got this uh, table covered in a sheet. You know, you could use cardboard, carpet, anything like that, but mainly you just want to keep a clean surface, especially when you start going to uh, putting the new leather on. The last thing you want to do is something either, you know, mar the leather or get it dirty before you ever get it on the, on the, uh, on the seat. So again, just kind of keep a clean work area and now that I've got everything disassembled, at least on the, the bottom, I'll clean it up, make sure everything's kind of clear of any debris, and then we can get started. All right, with the new Durafoam sitting here, we're just gonna lay out where our heated seats will go. Remember these tuck down in here to make sure that everything's gonna fit into place. And then I'm just going to lay this back you could mark this where it's going to go if you want to. Need a little contact cement. Shoot some on here. Let that tack up and then we'll stick it down. So now we've got the heated seat done and let's get the cushion on the frame, which that's pretty much it. Just kind of sits in there and then the seat cover is actually going to hold everything in place. There's no fasteners that go between the actual frame and the cushion. And just understand this is going to 
protect and kind of lay over this way and everything's going to come and fasten so make sure you're not folding up any foam and make sure you get all your wires free as well mainly that's the heated wire that's going to come around here and if you're doing both seats the passenger and the driver then make sure that you've got the correct uh, cushion or correct lower portion whatever you're working on uh, it should say somewhere on there like in this case driver and then we want to leave it kind of inside out like we see it here because the main part of this is we want to make sure that we sink all our stitching where they're where it's supposed to go which is done with this stuff here and this hook and loop so we want to line everything up and i would start with this middle section right here and kind of put your finger put your finger in this location and know that you need to line up don't stick it down yet, but just kind of get a good idea that you're splitting the difference here on this running seam and this running seam. And then pick this up and make sure that you're right here in the middle here. Once you're confident in that, make sure your heated seat's not in the way and you can start pushing that down into that hook and loop and once you push it down you'll see that it grabs pretty well so i would kind of sink this middle one of these middle seams and then kind of roll it down and make sure it looks like that you're going to be nice and even when the seam comes across here and just that everything's going to look well if anything looks out of place then kind of slow down and back up and if you need to peel this up Make sure you hold the hook and loop down when you pull it and you can pull it up. If you just go to pull it, it might pull this off the foam and that's the last thing you want to do. So now I can work all this down and make sure that I'm sinking. You can see you're already getting the sinking where it's actually pulling that down. And by the way, keep your hands very clean too. You see, I just got that dirty. You may want to keep just some soap and water nearby, just kind of clean things up as you go. But you can see how I'm already sinking that stitch there. And that's all being done by that Velcro or hook and loop. Get those all sunk. And now I can start peeling this over. And you, want, you don't want to just kind of yank it over. You want to kind of hold this down here and work this side over. Same thing here. Hold it into place and also you want, you don't want this to roll up like that. You want to, that to lay down nice and flat so that your finished product again, just kind of roll everything over where it needs to be. Now, as long as everything's clean under there, lay your seat down. Now this is where it gets a little, uh, I shouldn't say technical or tricky, but so here's that kind of J hook. We have to actually turn this 360 degrees because we're going to roll this under here and then on over the material or the material over that and hook it onto here. And it actually locks into this right here. These are kind of pushed in and it will lock on those edges right there. So again, you can start by getting it up here. And that's 180, and then you need to roll it on over. And with that new foam, it is a little tough, but it can be done. And once you get it rolled over, you should feel it kind of lock into place. And once you get it started, then it's not so bad. There we go. That'll probably be the toughest part of getting this seat cover on is getting that to roll over because you'll think that it's not going to do it, but it will. And you'll see once we come over here, now look how nice all that looks already. So now all the seams look nice. Some of these wrinkles like that where it's been boxed up for a while, the sun will actually take that out. You can put a steamer on it as well. 
Now the same thing here, but you really don't have to do a 360 degrees, just kind of take this hook and put it over the top. Now again, can be a pain because, especially with this new foam, make sure you're aware of all where all your tabs went, where your wires went. So there's a few little puckers in here like this, but as I mentioned, once we get it in the vehicle, uh, one thing you can do, you can just kind of mist it with a little bit of water, close the doors on a sunny day, and the sun will continue to kind of, you know, get a lot of that out. If you have an upholstery steamer, you can definitely steam it and a lot of that'll come out. You can also kind of work it around as well. But other than that, you see all the seams look really nice, exactly like the OEM leather did. It's a really good looking seat cover. Now taking the backrest off or the upper seat cover is not a big pain, but we do have to remove the lower bolt for the seat belt. Uh, so we'll do that because it's actually going to, we're just gonna peel this cover off of this. We don't have to remove anything, any of the frame, but we're just going to be peeling this cover off of it. So we have to take the headrest off, uh, get the seat belt disconnected and work off this, um, this plastic cover here. And also we need to get the armrest off, which is kind of a, a pain you just kind of have to feel in, in the way. Uh, but very simple process as far as not a lot of steps, just kind of a pain to get to some of the stuff. So let's get started. And then for this seat belt cover here, if you'll take your clip tool, you can probably take a big screwdriver too, and just kind of get under it and just pry it up. It's just got a couple of points where it clips into place. You can see there or just slides over some metal tabs that are in there, but that's gonna stay on there. And we're just gonna peel that cover off. Here on the headrest, obviously it locks out. Uh, as you know, when you raise your headrest, you can bring it up and then it locks out at that point. You'll see some small holes right here. Now you can just pry these things off if you want to with a big screwdriver, but if you take something small like a paper clip, or in this case, it's a poultry pin, and just get in there and push, you have to unlock that one, and then push that one. So once you get both of them unlocked, that will just slide right out. And as I mentioned, you can also just get under here and pry that cap off if you want to do that that way as well, just like that. And that's what you're trying to push in right there. So that's just a little cover that you can pop off, and but that's what you're trying to push in with the paper clip or the upholstery pin. Okay, now we're looking at the bottom of that cover and basically it's just two J-hooks that are clipped into one another and we need to get those separated. Once you get it started, and then you wanna pull out these two plastic pins here. That's where the seat covers fold over. And you wanna save those. Okay, you'll notice we have not removed the armrest yet, and that is because there's a pin inside here, like a horseshoe clip that clips onto a rod that shoves in here, but you gotta get under there and kind of find your way. So we first need to kind of start peeling up this seat cover from the bottom. And we really want to start working this inside out. It can be a pain to get started, so just be patient. If you'll reach up in there and separate that Velcro from the hook and loop, you just want to slide your fingers up between them so, you, again, you don't rip that hook and loop off. You can see I'm just kind of working my way up. And you can see I've just got these bottom edges kind of turned upside inside out and got it started. This will probably be one of the toughest things to do and I really don't have anything to tell you other than you just got to find and work your way underneath this cushion. So underneath the material as well as underneath uh, the front side of the foam and find out about where this pin goes through and you can see where the pin will be about right here and it's only going to stick out about that far. So you got to reach under here and you can find when, when you rotate it and you'll realize there's a clip there that needs to be removed. So you can see that clip down in there and it's got a rubber band holding the two legs together. 
So you have to peel that off first and then remove the clip. So this is basically what it looks like. You've got this clip that is in there like this. Of course, this is in a sleeve. And then this rubber band is stretched over that. Now you don't have to put that rubber band back on. It's kind of a safety mechanism. And we can put this clip back in there before we put the armrest in. And then this, this will just slide in and lock into place. And it'll lock in that groove right there. So the good thing is we don't have to fish that back in after we're done. We can fish that back in here now, and then we'll just shove in the armrest till it clicks, which that's kind of a pain too. But anyway, that's what we were fishing out. Now these are the headrest tubes and they come out as well, but they're a real pain to get out just like that armrest was. And you really don't have to remove these because what you can do, you can just kind of fish this material up and around it and the same thing when we put the new seat cover on we can just cut a small hole and then stretch it over it and this is where you're just going to continue to peel this inside out and get it over the top And make sure when you're releasing this hook and loop that you're releasing the hook and loop that's back here too in the armrest so that will allow the seat cover to come up and you'll see the heating element on uh, the rear on the backrest or on the upper seat cover is just here on the lower lumbar section it does not go higher but we don't have to replace the foam on this so it should remain exactly where it's at no wires have to be removed or anything we just got to slide the new seat cover back on okay that clip that was so hard to get to this little clip right here is just right there. So of course the cover was on it. The armrest was on there. So the armrest was like this. So of course we couldn't get to it from that side. Now, if you would have wanted to cut all the cover off and you don't want the cover then that would have been fine. And now to put the clip back on, now we need, we can do it from right here. And just like that. Now, if you want to put that rubber band back on, you can do that too. So I think you get the idea of what we're going to be doing. Uh, first, I'm going to turn this inside out to put this on and then just kind of roll it down as we go. You'll see this cutout opening is already cut out on the leather, but the foam is not. So we'll need to take either a razor blade or some scissors and cut a slit here. We may have to open this hole up a little bit bigger, but I'll wait until we get it on and in place before I actually trim out any more leather there to do as minimum as possible. Now the top holes here for the headrest, I'm not gonna cut those yet. I'm gonna wait till we get it on there to trim that out the same way with the armrest as well. I'm not gonna trim that out till we get it on there and I know exactly uh, where to put that. Now, if you wanna transfer it from your old covers, you can do that. I like to wait till it's on to do it as well. Also, be careful because as with the, the bottom cushion, these, this loop side of the hook and loop is going to hook here on uh, the foam. And that's probably not going to be an issue here in these sunken seams. So make sure you don't get it hooked here where the armrest goes because once it does, it's going to hold that in place. So here in, inside the cover, is the place for the recession for the armrest and that's what's going to hold that in there and make it look all nice in there so make sure that doesn't grab yet keep it kind of puckered out as we roll it on or you won't be able to kind of move your cover around as you need it so first thing we're going to do cut this slit here and then i'll turn this inside out we'll feed the seat belt through and start fishing this thing on okay as i mentioned the first thing i'm going to do is just kind of reach in and Turn that inside out so now we'll be going from the top down and the first thing we need to do is to feed that seat belt through this slit and it's not just the seat belt remember that you got to put this whole escutcheon through there as well so feed the belt buckle through and you may have to open up that hole but we'll try to feed it through sideways yeah we're going to get it through there we go okay Now you just want to kind of line up the, the seams and try to peel it down. And you're going to get it down a little ways before it gets really tough, like right there. 
and you can wait on these top holes till we're almost complete to cut those for the headrest. So don't worry about that. Now it's going to get to the tight part, but you may be able to do this without any silicone whatsoever. So now we're really on there. We just don't have all the seams sunk. So what you want to do now is just kind of fiddle around. Make sure your seams are lining up. Oh, I'll let that touch. Make sure your seams across here look good. You know, you can kind of roll this and manipulate it right here. You got a good corner seam at the top of this foam on the back side. So make sure that lines up well, as well as twisting this if it needs to. Bring this around a little. This is where you want to kind of manipulate it where you want it to go. And again, just make sure all your seams are nice and flat and are at all the edges where they need to be. And once we do that, now we can kind of feel up here and make sure that we're lined up for both the center seam in the foam as well as this piece here where our hook and loop goes. You see it's grabbing very well. So I'm sinking that seam, same here. And this is where you can really make this look a lot better if you roll this in and really sink this seam right here. If you'll make sure that all that grabs, this will make the difference and you having a really good looking seat cover and one that's just got you know, too many puckers, if you will. And you can see how well I'm sinking that seam now by making sure it lines up in that foam with that hook and loop. Same way here, make sure I'm gonna pull down a little bit. Now, once I'm confident in all that being lined up, now I can grab this armrest and I wanna make sure that it sinks in really well. And it will also help us once we put that armrest in, it'll kind of hold all this into place as well. Now I would recommend, will you hand me that armrest? We did not purchase the armrest material, but you can see how the colors changed. It's just a little bit of difference over the aging of that and we'll clean that up. But you may wanna purchase, you know, spend the extra few bucks to get you armrest coverage just so that's all brand new as well. We did not do it on this set, but they do have those available. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is pull these corners in, these little tabs here, and this is where these little plastic clips go that we pulled out of the old ones. And we're just gonna pull this down and then we wanna find that hole right there through the leather, through the vinyl, through the boxing, and poke a hole in there and then shove this clip through. And this is where a little upholstery pin like this right here comes in very handy. And you want to pull it pretty tight, but you don't want to put it extremely tight because this cardboard's not going to hold a ton. And you're probably going to have to put more than a, a pinhole, but that'll get you started. And I'll just cut a little X, be able to get my, pin my push clip through, find that hole, push that in. Now I'll do the bottom side. So you can see here, I take a hook tool, and grab it on the inside channel here, and on the lift on that one, and just work it down. Get it nice and solid. So now that's not coming apart. Okay, so you can see here with uh, this little discussion, it clips on a tab there and a tab right here. Well, that top tab is right here, and it looks like that cover will probably stretch over it. But this side tab, I don't think I'm going to get a, be able to, I think it'll stretch too much. So I'm going to trim just a little bit of that off and always start little. Trim the foam too. Careful not to cut your seat belt. So now I can get it over that tab. Get it over that tab. And there we have it. Now that's on there. Didn't have to trim, but a tiny bit off of that hole. So now we know our headrest tabs are right here underneath this cover. And again, we're gonna start slow on this and I'm gonna find the center, wherever the hole is. Use my little upholstery pin, kind of mark that hole. You could even use a marker if you wanted to. And there's the hole. That's where you wanna double, triple check. The pain here is you need to cut through the foam too. And if you feel better with a razor blade, you can do that too. And basically, 
you're just going to stretch this over the top. See, it's not rocket science at all. You just don't want it too small that it puckers up, but right there, I think you're going to be fine because then we want our hole to line up with this outside push tab. And look at there. Now, this is one where you might be kind of in the blind and you can look on your other cover and just kind of see how they cut out uh, for this. And this is one where you be careful again, kind of sneak up on it because you don't want to go too big, too fast. That's the pin that's going to go in this channel right here once we push that on. And that's what limits it from going up and down once we get the clip in. But now we have to have the hole where this goes into it. And by the way, if you leave all this leather in here, it won't go in far enough to actually sink. I've tried that before. So we do have to kind of cut out a window for this. But I want to find the hole where our axis goes, and that's right there. Just kind of cut you a path between the two. There we go. I'll spray a little silicone on this. Our clip is in there, so we want to make sure that we are ready to go. So there you have it, but now we need to make sure that it clips in. And once you push it in hard enough, It'll clip in, and there you have it. And I'd raise that armrest up and let it sit there for a few days, and it'll help mold that top piece in. You can see where it's kind of wanting to pucker down. Leave that for a few days. That'll help kind of mold that in place. Okay, we're ready to put the headrest on, and this should just slide right into place. And then you want to make sure that it goes in the way it locks, because these tabs only lock on one side. There you go. And by the way, you may want to clean up your seat belts before you get started on this. You can see the discoloration and just the years of, um, yeah, what your body will do to a seat belt. So just a word to the wise. Okay, now you want to put your seat belt back on. And by the way, make sure it's, there's an offset here. Make sure it goes on the correct way. And you may want to kind of run your seatbelt across to make sure it lines up correctly and you don't have it twisted. Now this is one that we want to kind of sneak up on as well. So we need to cut out uh, this hole here and you can see the factory one kind of had a, you know, a, a sewn image, there, a sewn thing there. We don't have to do all that. Uh, we just need to cut a hole and, and make sure that our trim covers it. And you can wait to put this on the seat if you want to, but if you left all your wiring connected to the pan, then we can go ahead and put that on here and then put it on the actual seat frame without an issue. So it gives you a little ability to kind of work inside and outside of this without having to, you know, work around a seat frame. So you want to get an idea of where this is going. And again, you can kind of look at the underside and see right along here where everything is going to go. And this front side is kind of the kicker because it, it almost kind of tucks in and especially with that plug where it's kind of a pain to get to, or you actually, it's right here where you'll have to kind of fish over here and, and plug that in. It's kind of a pain, but it's not a big deal. And by the way, I found all the broken pieces for this one and hot glued them into place. Probably not going to stay, but maybe initially as we screw them on, it'll help us find those holes. Bit scary. You can kind of see this lineup pin right here goes in that hole right there. So that's about where this is going to go. And that'll tell you about how much more you need to trim off. And again, it's going to help you to have something like this here where you can fish through and find where your holes are supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and plug this plug in. that's left to do is to install our cushion and so we need to take these uh, plastic tabs that are down here in the bottom they're going to go in those little keyholes right there and this is where also you may want to look back at maybe some pictures or something and make sure that your wires are in the right place and you want to fish this main pigtail through here clip it back onto the frame 
and then you may want to go ahead and clip it back onto here as well. So that one went through there, and that one there. That'll help you kind of guide everything right. Just make sure they're all the way seated in the keyhole. Your front bolt holes should line up now, or your top bolt holes. Again, just make sure nothing's going to get pinched when all the mechanisms are running. The little seat belt one right here is kind of a pain, but you can get it. This will plug in once we get it in the truck. Then we want to clip these. And this one here. Line up our bolts. So be careful and don't do what I just did. So uh, these seat plastics have to go on at least this side before this gets mounted all the way down. So I'm going to have to loosen those nuts, raise it back up to be able to get this in because that clip right there goes up under the lip of this seat. Okay, now I've got this seat loose because I put it on uh, before putting on this seat plastic. And it just basically wraps around the back. So I went ahead and clipped it around the back and then pretty self-explanatory. It goes in and these clips clip into place. And then the seat for seat sits back over the top of this. This one's very easy. This just goes around and kind of lips over this piece of metal here. And then that one clip will go right there in that hole. Make sure you get this little plastic pin in that hole that lines everything up. We think the results really speak for themselves. I mean, you can't even compare what we were looking at compared to what we've got now. And by the way, just so you know, this upper section has not seen the sunshine, has not seen a steamer or anything. We installed this and this is how it sat. Literally all the seams, everything is as it was as we finished it. Uh, the cushion we set out in the sun for like 90 minutes and it did a tremendous job of pulling out some of these small puckers like you see uh, along the bolsters here, that stuff will come out either with a steamer. So, you know, upholstery shops will have steamers. You can get those out. You can use a, a clothing steamer to pull some of that out. But we intentionally didn't want to touch it with a steamer. And again, just some sunshine in your vehicle, uh, maybe even spritz it with a little bit of water. will pull out a lot of that with just the good old sunshine and heat. Um, so, but again, we wanted to leave this as is as we finished it but it really stands out the quality when you look at these seams that are tucked and again that's just doing with the with the oem hook and loop that was in there and that's one of the kudos for the seat shop is the fact that they really make an oem style seat cushion or seat cover that in many ways is better than oem especially when it comes to the foam as well and when you look at the covers even the boxing it's back lined with foam so you're going to get a lot, you've got a lot better integrity there. Look at the double stitch seams. All of that stuff, I didn't mention, but I grew up in a trim shop, in a glass and upholstery shop. My father's been doing auto upholstery since the 60s. And this is the stuff that I used to see him do with uh, custom restorations um, and going back to OEM with some stuff, but really stuff that you really don't see on an everyday basis. Very quality work here. So very impressed with this. Not something that I was paid to say whatsoever. Again, thank you to the seat shop. They did provide the covers for us to use, uh, but obviously we installed them. Now looking at cost to do the front two seats, the complete seats uh, on a Silverado or a Tahoe. This is the early 2000s Tahoe. Suburban would be the same thing, Silverado. Into the mid 2000s is gonna be about the same thing. It's gonna run you about a thousand bucks for the seat covers, for the two cushions and the two backrests or the two uppers and the two lowers. If you're getting the armrest, things like that, that'll add up as well. But again, I think our total was like 1095, so right at 1100 bucks. But again, you're totally transforming the look and the feel of the vehicle and uh, just, you can't even compare these two. So, hey, we'll have a link in the description to the seat shop. They've got many different vehicles that they provide seat covers for. Uh, a lot of instructional videos for those as well, so be sure to check those out. But keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok, and if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our awesome leather seat video, then give us a thumbs down, but would you let us know in the comments why? 
Have a great day and keep smiling.